So here we are, number 48, the house that I grew up in. Uh, we moved there in 1962. Uh, looking up here, that's my bedroom window. That was a box room that I shared with my uh, elder brother for most of my childhood and parts of my adulthood. And that's my, uh, the secondary school I went to, Dankford Secondary School. That's the very, uh, I used to, if I bunked off, I would come out of that gate there and have to slide around the wall, staying close to the wall so the teachers didn't see me, and then bolt to here to bunk off. So this is a journey that I did millions of times as a child on the way to school and as a grown-up on the way to uh, the pub. Um, when I was a kid, this was basically, you know, there's the grass, that's where we would play football. You could do sliding tackles, but there was always the danger of the ball going over someone's garden. Mary would never give it back. The Polish people were all right. Um, and this was the pitch, a lot tidier than... Um, when I was a kid, we didn't have those goals. We just had goals painted on the walls. And uh, yeah, so it's just basically straight through here. They weren't there either. No doubt that's organic. So now we are entering from Thompson Close, Curtain Gardens. And anyone who's grown up on a council estate will know that there's always a rival estate. Uh, so most of our football matches would be played against Curtain Gardens, this was their pitch, not good enough, so they would come and play on our pitch. And so it generally it was Curtain Gardens versus Thompson Coast. We were always better. I tended to be Martin Chivers because uh, I had a long throw. Uh, or occasionally Alan Gilzean because I was good at just adding it back a little bit. But anyway, let's push on to the birdcage. Here's another thing that was a, a favourite game of mine. Um, when I was a kid, this bit was wooden. It's been replaced now, but any self-respecting child who's not faced with this as a challenge and doesn't take it on needs to be seen. So my aim was to get all the way from here to the middle bit. <laughs> Very little chance of me getting there, but the aim was to get here and step across onto this one and continue. And I slipped, I think it was about eight or nine, and caught my shin right on that bit there and tore the front of my leg open. So, uh, I don't know, no health and safety back then, just socks. So let's plough on. I'm a bit disappointed about that. I used to be much better at that. <laughs> See, look, I'm improving already. Bosh, job done. So, this was it, the final um, leg of the journey. If I was a little boy, I'd have been on my way to Columbia Road School, which is just beyond the birdcage by about a minute. But from the age of about 15, this was my destination, the birdie. Everything was possible once you hit the birdie. Women, beer, Music it was all right here. Mickey, we're in the uh, Birdcage pub, which I believe is your local or your old local. Any yeah. memories that pop to mind? Thousands, thousands of them, yeah. We, we, we started coming in here when I was like 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Not that I want to get the owner in any trouble, I'm sure that he doesn't do that now. Um, I'm sure you have now, you have to be 17. Um, but, uh, yeah, we started coming here because I'd lived just through those, those flats over there. Yeah. So this was the automatic pub that we would all meet in yeah. from all these sort of estates around the edge. And, uh, yeah, and I, I've been coming in here ever since, over the last... <sighs> how many years? So, so the last 30 years, 30-odd 30, 30 years. And this pub would other East End, how can I put it, notoriety being here? If you've got any pub in Bethnal Green, you're going yeah. to have people in there who've probably possibly been in some sort of trouble. I don't think it was particularly known for that, but yeah. I mean, you know, if you came in here on any Sunday or, you know, Saturday night, I'm sure there'd be a few of the faces about. Yeah. Who would, um, you know, either just got out of prison or on their way to it. That's one of those things, you know, but not that you would go over and say to them, I heard you go into prison. <laughs> 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 I heard you just got out. I remember my dad. 
introducing me to a bloke called Red Face Tommy in here once and said, oh, this is Red Face Tommy, he's just got out of doing 15. Which is sort of, you know, you look at something and think, 15 years. Wow. For going to work on the pavement. Yeah. For going to work on the pavement? Yeah. Man, that... You know, old, him, old up man. Oh, right, I didn't know the term. Yeah, well, that's it, nor did I. But right. I just went, yeah, yeah, well, so go to work on the pavement. Of course, you know. A lot of those things you go and ask around afterwards. What's he talking about? And I believe your school, your first primary school, is literally just out of the door. Columbia Road, Road Primary School is just down that road there. Yeah. So this was my also my walk to school as a small boy. Yeah. I used to come here. I used to have to come here every night to get the newspaper from... There was a paper stand there. I don't know if it's... I'm sure it's not there. I think it's where I first learned that I could be funny. Because mm -hmm. I used to say to the paper man every few months, you're the paper man? And he'd go, yeah, and I'd say, oh, what, you don't blow away? <laughs> and uh, he'd go, yeah, and away, yeah. And I'd give it a few months and I'd get him again. And... Um, I remember seeing him in a stripper's pub some 15, 20 years later when I was fully grown up. Yeah. And I went over and said to him, you the paper man? And he went, yeah. I said, did you ever blow away in the end? <laughs> so I'm still haunting him with the same joke 20 years later. It's the longest call back in history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He did get it, though, I think. I mean, it was you, yeah. But he probably got it from every kid. Yeah. Yeah. And is that... Where is there a real Gary Hutton? Is that where Gary Hutton went? Or Gary where? Hutton went to my secondary school, which is there. That's Dateford Comprehensive School right. there, at the back there. He went to, uh, yeah, a lot of the kids came from Oxton, Shoreditch, Bethnal Green to come to Dateford School there, which is where I got to meet sort of not a new set of mates, really, yeah. when they came to that secondary school. But Gary Hutton was in my class, yeah. So that's... All totally real, total... I mean, yeah, is, yeah. are some of the stories uh, embellished? Are some, do you hold back a little bit? No, I mean, when, when the, um, the school teacher or the careers officer had, had appointed himself for that lesson yeah. to talk to us about our careers and what we wanted, when he actually went round the class and said, what do people want to do? Most of us said stupid things like, oh, I want to be a spaceman, or oh, I want to be a Grand Prix driver, because we just never took anything seriously. Mm. But when it got to Arthur, he seriously said, I want to drive a van. <laughs> Which, you know, creased everybody up. Because <laughs> he was actually... That was his genuine ambition. <laughs> and has he gone on to I drive a van? I don't know, I don't think so. I've heard tell that he, he went on to do... Uh, a number of jobs, but none of them actually reaching the giddy heights of <laughs> driving a van. Have you travelled much? I'm not a big fan of travelling. I get that, that, that You know, yeah. I don't... I, it doesn't excite me like it does some people. I tend to think my ideal holiday is leave London, get to the beach or mm -hmm. the swimming pool as quickly as possible and get a beer in your hand. That, to me, is a, a proper holiday. Any more of a hassle than that, and I'm starting to think, is it worth it? So I think South End is the Anna closest. And has got nothing to worry about with me. Or Michael <laughs> Palin. I don't want to go on a boat across the Indian Ocean. Sure. You know. But I think South End is the closest uh, seaside resort. From here? From here, yeah. A lot of people, this South End's a big day out for, really, yeah. for the East End, yeah. 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 40, 50 What miles. more do you want? Nothing. You know, it's all there. <laughs> you, you can get to Fenchurch Street in 20 minutes. Yeah. You can be on. The, you can be in South End within an hour and ten. You can be in the uh, the Foresters Pub. You know. You can be drunk by one o'clock. <laughs> you, you can drink on the You can drink on the train and on the way there. Then you can go on the Curzel and uh, you know. What Great. more do you want? Nothing. Especially if the tide's out. You can just go and lay in the mud. <laughs> Make an imprint and just <laughs> lay, lay in all that sludge, which is great fun. Um, eventually, after all your playing days, you went off and got an education and you went into teaching. Yeah. Tell us what we're talking about. It. Okay. <laughs> no, no, but you know, one of those, once again, you can stumble along until you hit something which yeah. basically is not for you. So everything was right until the point where I actually ended up in the school trying to be a teacher. I just hated it. Right. You know, and the, the whole thing from top to bottom. So, was that, with teaching being clearly not for you, was that one of the things that prompted you to do stand-up? Yeah, or? yeah it, was, it was in the teacher training year that I started to do stand-up in the evenings. Mm -hmm. Just as a way of almost, you know, tick, 
having a laugh at least at the end of the day or try yeah. having something I'll get, I'll get, I'll giving myself a little bit of hope really mm -hmm. and I thought if this works out I won't have to do this yeah uh, not that I would have ever done that anyway I don't think um, but it kept you sane yeah because it was just such a free environment you know yeah. if you're you got a class full of kids who are not bad kids just kids giving you our time you can't stop saying to them shut the fuck up you pricks <laughs> otherwise I'll clump one of you <laughs> you can't uh, whereas when you're on stage, you can say whatever you like. Whether it's funny or not is another issue, but you yeah. can certainly say whatever you like. Yeah. You know. And I believe you met Kath, your wife, at a comedy gig, is that right? I'd done a show, and then I met her afterwards upstairs in the bar, mm -hmm. assuming that maybe she'd seen the show. Yeah. And it was only later on when I went to a party where she was there as well. Right. Someone said to me, oh, look, well done tonight. He was really good. And she said, what's that all about? So she, I said, oh, well, I was on tonight at the comedy club. So she said, oh, I, I weren't watching. I was having a drink upstairs. So I said, well, that ruins my chances of sleeping with you, didn't it? And she <laughs> went, I don't know about that. So, <laughs> you know. So it, was, it wasn't like she saw me on stage. It yeah. was like, so we met on neutral ground, as it were, which is a quite a good thing, really. And then clearly your playing days were over. That moment. Yeah. In that moment, they ended. <laughs> are you out or were you out? <laughs>